was a dark and stormy night with a heavy downpour of rain. A young woman, who was the only survivor of a ghastly car accident, staggered and crawled for several kilometers in pain and terror before arriving at the doorstep of an old widower, Mr. Paul. With the little ounce of strength left in her, she managed to knock on his door several times. And the widower got off his bed and looked through his window to see who was knocking helplessly. And he shouted, Who is there and what do you want? And the woman replied, Please help me. I am dying. I do not care whether you're dying or dead. Get lost! He shouted. And the woman begged, Please, I am begging you. Save me. I said, Get lost! Mr. Paul shut his window went back to bed and left the woman there in pain. The next morning, the body of the young woman was found across the street, covered in blood. Now, what is your first impression about the widower, Mr. Paul? He is heartless and naturally wicked. He is inconsiderate and has no regard for another person's life. He has no sympathy at all. He is a savage and a ruthless man. He, he deserves to be dead as much as a young woman, right? We plan these opinions about this man in our minds and if by chance we happen to have an encounter with him, we perceive him from the perspective of our drawn conclusions about the kind of person he is, a wicked and heartless man. We attach this label on him even without knowing the other part of the story and we criticize and chastise him as if we have known him his entire life and that is how he has always been, cold and heartless. A couple of years ago, Mr. Paul heard a ruffled knock on his door at about 2 a.m. in the morning. And when he got to the door, he found a half-conscious young woman who was bleeding profusely with a lot of physical bruises on her body. He quickly rushed out to help her and took her inside. He tended her wounds and asked his wife to get her new clothes and something to eat. Three hours later, the people who were after this young woman traced her to Mr. Paul's house. And they broke into the house and killed the young woman as well as Mr. Paul's wife and his two children. Mr. Paul managed to escape but unfortunately his left hand was cut off by one of the armed men. And from that very day he swore never to help any stranger in distress whether the person is dying or dead. Now with reference to this little background story as to why Mr. Paul decided not to help the dying young woman the other night because of the initial vow he had made after losing his family, we might even begin to feel guilty for judging him too quickly and drawing sudden conclusions about the kind of person he is. And some of us might even be tempted to justify his action. Inherently, we humans are quick to judge other people, to tag them, to label them, to define them, to assume that we know all about them and that they are nothing more than what they appear to be. You see, a person's life is like a book of, say, 200 pages, and it would be awfully wrong for us to just come into that person's life at page 105 and assume we know all about that person because we have stayed with him or her up to page 107 of their life, and then draw several conclusions about their motives, actions, fears, doubts, habits, or their personality. We were not there with them at page 5, page 15, 50 or even 100 of their life. And yet we assume we have all the right to judge them by their present lifestyle and choices at page 107 and label them as mean, inconsiderate, arrogant, poor, worthless, abusive, promiscuous, irresponsible, lazy, rude or selfish. Everybody's present is defined by their past, their experiences. And daily, we all struggle to make the right choices, to avoid the mistakes of the past, to make decisions based on our experiences, and to try to be ourselves as best as we can. So in as much as we may sometimes feel the urge to judge and criticize people instantaneously as a result of their misconduct or lifestyle, we could be more humane by simply doing two things when it comes to dealing with people. To exercise patience and to show empathy. To try to put ourselves in their shoes to understand that their lives are also as complex as ours as well. Some people might be having a bad day and our first encounter with them may turn out to be highly unpleasant and awful and we might quickly tag them as annoying. Some might be in a very good mood at that particular time and our first encounter with them may result in harmony and goodwill and 
we might hastily conclude that they are nice people. You see, drawing conclusions about people by their first impression on us is an unhealthy way to live life, especially if we wish to be happy, to have a better understanding of people, and to build healthy and firm relationships that are based on trust and mutual respect. We should always try to see the potential good in people to know and understand that a person's life is a collection of his or her past experiences, good and bad. And taking the time to understand people and their motives would help strengthen our relationship with them and create room for more openness and trust. And going back to the widower, Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul was once a kind and loving man who derived pleasure in helping people. But that tragic incident which cost him his left hand, his wife and his two children broke him and hardened his heart and it made him appear mean and heartless. And if we hadn't got close enough to know the other side of the story, we would have hastily classified him as an evil man with no conscience. But deep down, he was only looking out for himself and trying to avoid the recurrence of his tragic loss, though it was quite unfortunate that the young woman lost her life before dawn. You never know what you could be missing if you don't take the time to go closer and really understand the people around you and to know why they do what they do or act the way they do instead of simply relying on mere assumptions. Because believe it or not, there is good in every man. Peace.